Good morning, everybody. Thank God for another day among the land of the living. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the Word, and thank God for the Holy Spirit. And thank God that He has not appointed us unto the wrath that is to come. Um, God does not appoint His children to wrath. He does not pour out His wrath upon His children. Amen. So, that's what we're talking about today is, is um, you know, the wrath of God. And when you read in John, St. John chapter 3, this is going to be a pretty short video. I just want to bring up a point. And we're going to John chapter 3. At the very end, I think it's verse 36. I want to read this really fast. Um, You either believe in Jesus and have eternal life, or you have the wrath of God upon you. And that's what verse, chapter 3, verse 36 says of St. John. It says this, He who believes on the Son has everlasting life. And he who believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. So we know that, look, God made a way for us to escape that eternal uh, punishment. He made a way for us to get out of that eternal separation from God, that that death sentence that we have placed upon us as sinners, that's our wages as sinners, is death. And so, um, he made a way. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. When you believe on Jesus and trust in Jesus, when you hear the gospel message, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, and you hear that he paid your sin debt in full with his blood, and you believe and place your faith and trust in Jesus, um, for salvation, you're saved. You're born again, and you're a child of God at that moment. That's how you receive the gift of salvation, is by placing your faith and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And once you're a born-again believer, once you're a child of God, God does not pour out his wrath upon you. But if you reject such a salvation plan, if you reject Jesus, as your Lord and Savior, you have the wrath of God abiding upon you. So we know God does not pour out his wrath upon his children. And we know that there is wrath that's coming in the great tribulation period. After, after okay, there's debate on this. But one point I want to show you right now is this. I'm going to read First um, Thessalonians 5. No, it's First Thessalonians um Chapter 1 and verse 10. The whole point is this. God does not pour his wrath out upon his children. We get disciplined. We get chastised. We get chastened. Um, just like a father chastens his children. But he doesn't pour his wrath out upon his children. Verse 10. 1 and 10 of 1 Thessalonians says this. And to wait for his son from heaven. We're waiting for Jesus to come. Whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So Jesus has delivered us from that eternal wrath to come, but also um, God will not pour out his wrath upon his children during the tribulation period. Um, there's a point where God is going to pour his wrath out at the end of the tribulation period. Some say the whole seven years is, is the wrath of God. Um, but this is what I'm trying to say. I don't believe that. I believe the wrath of God is like the final year. It's at the end. It's not the whole seven years. Um, if that was the case, you would have to say that God pours his wrath out upon his children. I don't care if you get saved now or if you get saved during the tribulation or after the tribulation that, or Daniel's 70th week. Um, there's going to be people that get saved during the millennial kingdom. But the whole point is this. God does not pour his wrath out upon his children. Uh, five, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9 says this. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that all those who place their faith and trust in Jesus as their Messiah, as their Lord and Savior, and they trust in Jesus to take them all the way to eternal glory, um, you're born again, you're a child of God, and God does not pour his wrath out upon you once you're a child of God. Now, here's my question. 
And I believe just like if you read in chapter in, in Revela Revelations chapter six, I'll just show you this really fast. Revelations chapter six says this. When the seals are opened up, you have the first six seals. And the first seal, you see great deception. The rider on the white horse is great deception. The second seal is wars, uh, or he has the ability to take peace from the earth. The third seal is dealing with famine and pestilence and economic collapse and touch not the oil and the wine. Um, and then the fourth seal is dealing with death. All those from the first three plagues or first three horses um, the first three seals, they're all killed. There's a lot of death taking place in seal number four. Seal number five, you see the saints, the tribulation saints. That's what they like to call them. I just say those that are martyred, martyred for their testimony of Jesus during that period of time. Seal number five is dealing with the martyrs, um, the wrath of Satan. See, Satan is cast out of heaven midway through the tribulation, the final seven-year period. He's cast to the earth, him and his angels. He possesses the Antichrist, and that's when the Antichrist uh, demands all to worship him, and, and all that don't take the mark of the beast will be killed. Um, and so that's the wrath of Satan at that point. But the wrath of God, you see in seal 6, it says this, and I believe... I believe the seven seals, the first seven, the seven seals are dealing with the seven years of the tribulation period. That's what I believe. That there's 13 parallels that line up in chapter uh, Revelations, chapter six through eight, that line up with the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, perfectly. And I believe that the, the seven seals are dealing with the seven years. Um, the final Daniel 70th week, the final seven years of this age. And when you read seal six, you see this. And I beheld when he, which is talking about Christ, had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became, this is verse 12, the sun became black as sath cloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, now listen to this, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand so in seal six you see the wrath is going to be poured out it's not seal one two three four five that's the wrath of satan but the wrath of god the wrath of the lamb is going to be poured out in seal six and i believe that's immediately after the tribulation of those days when we see the son of man coming and i believe that he'll rapture us out of the out of the um, the church will be resurrected and raptured, will be taken to heaven before the wrath is poured out. So my point is this, if if the whole seven years is, is the wrath of God, that means he's going to pour his wrath out upon his children. And we know God does not pour his wrath out upon his children. The wrath of Satan is different than the wrath of God. The wrath of Satan, Satan is going to be, he's going to have great wrath when he's cast out of heaven because in less than three years, um, he's going to be um, cast into the bottomless pit. He's going to be locked up for a thousand years. Then he'll be released after the thousand year millennial kingdom where the, for that final Gog and Magog war where he'll a, attack Jerusalem where all the saints of God are. And that's when God's going to rain down fire and brimstone to destroy him. He'll be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. But the seven-year trip, the final seven-year period, Daniel's 70th week, Jacob's trouble, I do not see how the whole seven years can be called the wrath of God because God does not pour his wrath out upon his children. If you get saved during the tribulation, during the final seven-year period, I like to call it Daniel's 70th week 
the final seven years of this age because to me the great tribulation does not begin till um, Antichrist stands in the temple of God claiming to be God demanding all to worship him which happens midway through the final seven years but my point is this we're not appointed to wrath we're not appointed to eternal wrath and we're not appointed to the wrath that's going to be poured out at the battle of Armageddon where Jesus will come and defeat the Antichrist and false prophet and, and their armies. Um, we're not appointed to wrath. God doesn't pour his wrath out upon his children. And if you say the whole seven years is God's wrath, that contradicts the fact that God does not pour his wrath out upon his children. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I believe in the resurrection and rapture, and I believe it's going to take place immediately after the tribulation of those days, before the wrath of God is poured out. So, you know, God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Um, you know, we need to just continue to live for the Lord, try to help win people um, to the Lord, and share the gospel message with as many people as you can, because this thing is, is coming down to the final stages uh, before Jesus returns, we're almost there. Things are lining up perfectly. Um, exactly how the Bible says it would happen. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's time to seek God with all of our hearts. It's time to put on your spiritual armor um, and keep your faith and trust in Jesus. He is the Savior of the world. It's His blood. So the scripture says they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto the death. The context is this. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. But there's coming a time during the, the, the great tribulation period where many are going to um, give their life as a martyr for their testimony in Jesus. The scripture says Satan can overcome us. The ones that die, the ones that are martyred, he overcomes them by being able to kill them. But in the end, we overcome Satan. Because the ones that give their life, amen, for their testimony will gain eternal life forever and ever. So, Satan doesn't have power over death. Jesus has power. He, he defeated death. He defeated Satan. And we can have eternal life um, because of what Jesus did for us. And all you have to do is turn to God with all your heart. That's what repentance is. Believe the gospel. Turn to God and um, place your faith and trust and your hope in Jesus Christ for salvation and for everything else that we go through on this earth. Um, 11 and 1 of Hebrews says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And our hope is in Jesus. That is our hope. That's our blessed hope that we're going to gain the gift of eternal life and we're going to live forever and ever with God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the beautiful people of God who place their faith and trust in Jesus. Amen. Um, it's, the salvation is a gift. It's being offered to us. And we have to either choose to receive the gift or to reject the gift. The scripture says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Today is the day of your salvation. So have that conversation with the Lord. Repent to God with all your heart. Believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and Savior and that he's the Son of God and God raised him from the dead and confess him as your Lord and Savior. Trust in him as your Lord and Savior. The same way you trust in that parachute to save you if you're falling out of an airplane to the ground, you'd put that parachute on so you don't die. Well, you do the same thing. You put your trust put on Jesus. Put your trust in Jesus to save you on judgment day. Don't trust in yourself. Jesus is the one that paid your sin debt in full with his precious blood. It's the only payment that will be accepted by God the Father on judgment day. Don't trust in yourself. Trust in Jesus to, to take you all the way into eternal glory. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Have a wonderful day.